when you want to record clean vocals, but you don't want to deal with all the background noise you might pick up with a condenser microphone, what's the next thing you buy? How about a dynamic microphone? This is the Rode Procaster. Let's look at the box. It says, Broadcast Quality Dynamic Microphone, Tailored for Voice Frequency Response, Internal Pop Shield, and a 10-Year Warranty. Nice. We've got the signature Rode dot on the side, and on the back, just darkness. By the way, folks, you'll notice my table is dirty. There's a bunch of chairs and planks against the back wall. That's because my fiancé is building a crochet shelf, and those pieces gotta wait somewhere. Back to the Procaster. Guess what? Time to take it out of the box. That ought to do it. Here we go. Oh boy, folks, the anticipation continues. There's another case inside the box. Let's see what's in here. You've got a ring mount for your microphone stand. Putting that aside, we have... I don't know, some kind of instructions, maybe? Putting that aside, we have a registration slip for your 10-year warranty. Then we have... actually, maybe these are the instructions. Okay. And now, the matter at hand. The actual microphone itself. Let's unzip it and see what's going on. There it is. The Rode Procaster. A broadcast quality dynamic microphone, and the first dynamic microphone I've owned in many years. This thing is heavy, weighing in at about 1.64 pounds. I'm sort of concerned my mic stand might not be able to support this weighty microphone. The build feels fantastic. Lots of cold metal, very sturdy. This is an end address microphone, by the way, with a cardioid polar pattern. And, since it's a dynamic mic, you won't need 48 volts of phantom power. But, you will need an XLR cable, so this is a really awesome looking mic. You've got this cool pattern running down the side. You've got a very sturdy metal grill on the top and along a good portion of the mic's body. And, you've got the signature gold dot one so often finds on Rode microphones. Let's not forget the ring mount. Looking good. And, one last feature on the Rode Procaster. A place at the bottom of the mic to connect your XLR cable. So I tried to put the Rode Procaster in this shock mount I've had kicking around for the last decade, and it just would not fit. The microphone is quite robust. So I'm going to attempt to attach the included ring mount and hopefully do it correctly. I've unscrewed this ring from the bottom of the mic, and while I didn't read the instructions, I can only assume this goes here and the ring secures it in place. As a quick look into the future, I eventually purchased a really awesome shock mount for this microphone, the Rode PSM-1. That shock mount works like an absolute charm, but I didn't have it at the time of this unboxing. But you know what I do have? This blue documentation. But honestly, I don't know how to interpret this. Like, what exactly is going on here? Is he swinging it wildly? Is that his leg or a check mark? What is in that box? He looks so happy. So the ring mount didn't exactly fit my boom arm, but using an adapter solved that problem. With the adapter in place, it wasn't difficult to attach the ring mount. And while I don't have any footage of me actually putting the mic on my boom arm, as you can see, it wound up working out just fine. Though, like the shock mount, I eventually upgraded to an official Rode mic stand, the PSA-1, which does a far better job of supporting this dynamic beast of a microphone. Overall, I'm very happy with the Procaster. It does a good job of cutting down on background noise in my less-than-perfect recording environment, and... I used it to record the voiceover for this video. Hopefully you like the way it sounds as much as I do. The Rode Procaster. And I gotta be honest, the very first thought that came to my mind when I unboxed this is that it's kind of like a laser sword from a sci-fi movie. Wow. Alright, now it's a microphone. What am I doing?